good money. So I guess you want me to talk to you. So I'll talk to you. Whatever this shit is. Because I don't care anymore. I really don't. So. I watched that video. And um. Yeah. I'll talk about it. Um. So when I was in the airport. I was. Saying. You know, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of this place. How does all this fucked up shit keep on happening to me? Specifically with the people that supposedly care about me, right? Like my family. Thinking about when I was hurt in Virginia and my supposed mom was there. I almost died. And she left me. She had no job. Not that she left. In Virginia, she came to visit. And I got hurt at work. Paint puff exploded. They put the wrong valve on there. And it shot paint. And thinner into my hand. And stayed in the hospital for five days. And I could have died. All this shit. And when I got out, my mom was being a bitch to me. She didn't want to help me. She had, she didn't want to help me because I couldn't use my hand, my right hand. And um, I was just like, I'm done with her. You feel me? Like you left me when I need you the most and I'm sitting up here helping you take care of your family and shit and you motherfuckers need it. You're not helping me. I just knew something was very wrong. And I healed myself. Went through a breakup because I was in love at the time. I really was with Vince. And then I got pregnant. Had a miscarriage. I think I had a miscarriage. Because they kept on saying that the sack wasn't growing or whatever. Like it was um, some kind of pregnancy. I can't remember what they call it. But where the baby, the the egg doesn't continue to grow and shit. And so they were like, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to take this pill and miscarry naturally? Or do you want to go and get a DNC? And he was like, no, nah, baby, I don't want you going through having a, a um, you know, miscarriage. You could bleed to death or something like that. You don't know what could happen if you go through this shit. I said, okay, so I went and got a DNC. And that took me into another depression. It was like maybe four months after I got hurt or something like that. And um, I think it was, yeah. And um, I, um, it was like right after I got hurt. And sometime after this, after October, that I got hurt in September. On my 30th birthday, I went to Jamaica. And I came back and I got pregnant. But um, then I had the miscarriage and my family was, you know, I was far away from them because I was in Virginia. And I was in love. And then he stole my pills because they gave me pills for my pain. He stole my pills. Because I had to have a second, a third surgery on my hand. And he stole my pills and he had told me he was on heroin before. And then he just changed and wanted him to get the fuck up away from me. So I did what I had to do. And it still hurt me kind of still hurts right now think about it but I broke up with him and um then I went to jail in Virginia got pulled over got jumped on by the police towed my car I had to pay for that to get out 
they let me go in the early morning and I'm kind of weird shit. I don't want this shit. And, um, you know. So I was just kind of like, damn, what the fuck? And I had to fight that case and then I had to do my recovery. And they didn't even want to do my recovery on my hand, you know. So, I, um, they didn't want to do my physical therapy. So, I just had to fight for that. Make all these complaints and finally find a doctor that would reevaluate me and my hand and all of this shit. Because they didn't want to give me hardly no money. Finally, they ended up giving me the money I was supposed to, or giving me a partial. Good morning. And, um, oh, yeah. Pretty good. How you doing? Thank you. What kind of food do you like to eat this morning? I like breakfast food. Hold my hand. Hold your hand. I'm making a video. Oh, that's what you're doing? How many baby daddies you got? No. We'll be a good cop. We'll be a good cop. Where are you going to be at tomorrow? I'll be around here. I live in this neighborhood. How old are you? 43. Damn, I see what I'm working with. We're going to have 10 kids together. Yeah. Why is that fun? I'm just laughing because it's funny. You have a good one. So, um, what hey, can I get your phone number real quick? I, my phone isn't on. I just do videos on my phone. Damn. Let me see how tall you are. Huh? Yeah. I'm five six and a half, five seven. Damn. <laughs> Where your car at? I don't have a car. You ain't gonna get one. I don't know. Right. <laughs> Where you, you walking to this morning? To the store. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. Tata. Bibi. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but um. So that was Vince. That was my love story. I think it was like the first time I ever really been in love, you know, because he um, is very charismatic, beautiful man, tall, thick. He could pick me up and I was big then, bigger than I am now. He could pick me up and we used to eat crab legs and I took him fishing and stuff. So I made a very good impact on his life because he started fishing after he, me and him broke up because we ended up making up or, you know, I apologized for what I did. And um, he apologized for how he handled me and let it be known that it was like, you know, bound to happen. I'm tired because I don't really have no food. I don't like this. So I like to eat because it gives me energy. back to the airport so when I was in the airport um, I was sitting there thinking about all this shit and like I'm tired of this weird fucking shit and people fucking with me and I'm like you know in pain and suffering and weird shit and I don't want to do it you know I said I should jump off a bridge or something like that I guess somebody quote unquote heard me and I had moved to another part of the airport by United. And I was like watching the internet, reading or something, I don't know. And the police was like, a police officer surrounded me, the airport police. And they were like, you know, asking me all these questions. Like, what are you doing in here? And are you okay? And if somebody said that you wanted to commit suicide, and I was like, I don't, because, um, 
Nipsey had took me to Vegas and I had timeshare where it was cheap and I knew I could just travel, you know, and not be like stuck in one city. I could just travel because that's what I like to do. Thank you. It's a green light and I'm in the middle of the road. But um, somebody called those people and canceled my shit. That's why I said somebody is fucking stalking me and going behind what I'm doing and fucking it up. So somebody called them acting like they're me. And like I already said, I already know who's stealing my identity. And they canceled my shit. So uh, the timeshare is, I don't get it. But um, I, at the time I didn't know. I was like, I got timeshare. And I, I got shit I'm trying to do. I got my passport. I'm ready to get the fuck up out of here. So, they were like, well, we're going to take you somewhere where we can help you. And I was like, what? You know, I'm from Seattle. I got a law enforcement father. And I know I ain't done nothing wrong. You motherfuckers can't take me nowhere. So, they put their little gloves on. And I knew it was on from then. And they tried to get me out the chair, and they couldn't get me out the chair. Then when they finally did, they put the cuffs on me, and they tried to, like, sit me down or whatever, and they couldn't. They had my hands behind my back, and I was, like, walking. Walking those police, they were walking, be, you know, that I was pulling them, and they were like, oh, shit. So they put these leg straps on me, and I remember losing it and just being totally like these fuckers is gonna take me somewhere and abuse me because that's what the fuck they do to me and um i'm gonna die right here in this fucking fucking lax and um they end up calling the la fire department and they came out there and they shot me up with some kind of drug to make me pass out or whatever and um, I remember being on the little stretcher and that's it. And then I remember waking up in the hospital and some nurse dude was talking to me saying that I was anemic and I was just thinking, what the fuck? Motherfuckers took my blood and shit. All I did was leave the hospital and you gave me something to pass out. What the fuck is this about? I just remember kind of thinking that. And then I like pass out again, I guess, or whatever. Or blacked out, because obviously I was awake. Because I was sitting in a chair. And then, and then I remember waking up in a bed and they had me strapped to the bed with the little straps from Crazy Hospital straps or whatever, and my legs and my arms. And I remember getting my hand out of one of the straps and I was hella weak because I was drugged up. And I remember reaching over and unbuckling the other strap from my other hand and reaching up to undo my leg. And then I passed out again. You know, I sat up to undo my leg. And then I woke up in another hospital. They were like walking me down a hallway or something to this room. And I, I just, I remember having a very bad feeling of these people that were walking me down this hallway. And so I started screaming. I started screaming for Lucifer. And I remember them throwing me on the bed on my stomach and being on my back. And it was a bunch of guys, like big ass Samoan type motherfuckers, big ass Mexicans or something. And they were like on my back. It was like four or five of them. And they pulled my pants down. I was like, these fuckers is about to rape me. And I was just hollering and screaming. And then I was screaming Lucifer. And then I passed out. And I woke up again. And when I went, you know, I, I was in their bed or whatever. And then I went to the front counter. Like, what the fuck is this? Where am I? And told me I was in some crazy hospital. And I was like, what? And, um... And then when I seen the day, I was like, damn, this is three days later. What the fuck happened during these fucking days that I was knocked out? And um, 
they let me out. I remember the doctor came because I was like, I'm trying to get out of here. The psychic psychiatrist or whatever, he came and he talked to me and he was saying stuff like, oh yeah, you're from Seattle and you know, all the stuff that happened to you, I don't suggest you going back there. And I was just like, what? I don't even fucking remember talking to this dude or telling him anything, you know, about me wigging out or about my history. I don't remember anything talking to these people or any of that. I just, you know, I was like in a dead abyss because I couldn't remember anything. They released me and I was pissed. And I made a video somewhere. I'll upload it one day. Maybe I don't really give a fuck anymore. So, um, yeah. And then I went back to the airport because I was like, people can sleep in here. I'm not about to sleep on the streets with these fucking dope fiends and shit in LA. I'm going back to this fucking airport, you know? So I went back to the airport and. I was like pondering, like, what the fuck happened? Like, what happened in them three days? And it started really like, fuck with me. Like, what the fuck did they do to me? I don't trust nobody. I don't trust none of these people. And um, somebody, some voice or some thing said, what happened was you were in the ambulance and Somehow, some commotion, I started some commotion when I woke up or whatever. When I passed out, somebody else must have woke up in my body. I don't know. I don't really know. That's what they're telling me. Or that's what they was telling me. Somebody, something else woke up in my body and started acting crazy in that ambulance. And they said it flipped. That's why I saw that video. I was like, oh, okay. And they said after it flipped, I got out the ambulance. I was standing on top of it. And I was talking about eating people. And and then they didn't really say what happened. Because I remember when I had, matter of fact, when I was laying in the bed and they had me strapped down and I had woke up, I remember a male um, nurse coming in there because he seen me get my straps and he was... He pushed me down because I'm thinking, oh, I did it. No, he pushed me down and he was hella mean and rough with me. And then I passed out, but he was like fucking evil. Like I did something to him. And they were like, yeah, one of his teammates died or something like that behind what happened. I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't believe none of this because ain't nobody says shit. I went back to the airport. And, and I just remember my dad. Joseph Gordon jumping in my body and he was pissed because he said he set up things for all this shit not to happen to me and me being traumatized and that you know he's pissed and he started dancing around he dancing in my body showing his ass in the airport and the police came again and they took me to another fucking mental hospital. So I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this shit. I stayed in there a while. And the funny thing is, when I was in the crazy hospital the first time, they asked me who's going to come get you. And I told them, Scott Muscutty and my husband, he's going to come get me. That's what I said. I said, I don't know what's going on. You can find him. <laughs> Which adds to me being crazy, right? And it adds to me being in danger every time I talk about this shit because who knows when they might come get me again to put me in a mental hospital. But the second time I was in there, keep in mind it's like maybe three days after the, they had released me the first time. And I remember writing a letter to Scott and telling him to come get me. And, um, I, got, I really don't remember what I put in that letter, but I just wrote him a letter and was in there, and I was praying, and I, and I got out of there, and then I was just like, well, this is crazy, this is psycho shit going on right now, and so I, uh, I 
I think I went back to the airport, and by this time, there was other people in there that was homeless that were talking to me, and they started telling me their stories, and I was like, oh, they're fucking with people that are psychic somehow, and that's when they start telling me there's some kind of movie within the leaks called The um, Secret Life of Psychics or some shit like this, where they just kind of fuck with people who have psychic abilities and watch them somehow like I said through these cameras they had the footage for all of the shit that happened to me even though like I said I never have the footage sometime when I'm dancing around and shit I don't even fucking remember what the fuck I did whatever anything you know so people have footage of me doing stuff and I don't even fucking remember it and um not that much and then I just went through LA You know, just get on the bus and shit. (sighs) And then, like, maybe six, seven months later, I was in Nipsey's neighborhood, and I was still homeless. There was other things that happened in between there, but I skipped to all the parts of when I went to the mental hospital. Uh, I don't even want to talk about this. So... I was sitting in front of that Arco station, the one that's across from the Shell station on Crenshaw Lawson, and I was tired, and I was hungry, and um, my suitcase, the wheel had broke, and I'm on I'm one of them, and I was just like, I'm so tired of fucking doing this shit, I, I have to pee, I don't want to get up and pull my suitcases, and I'm hungry, I'm weak, and um... There were some people who had left some money for me, or at least they said they did, with the guy at the cash register so I could get what I wanted, and he didn't want to give me the money. And uh, I just started flipping out. And I took off all my clothes. And I was butt naked in that fucking Arco gas station parking lot going off and saying, I need money. And motherfuckers start driving by through the fucking... Arco giving me money then the police showed up and they were like because I had this little stick thing in my hand that comes for when you squeegee your car I broke off the squeegee part and I was holding a stick and they were like put this put it down and I was like I ain't fucking hurt nobody why I gotta put it down and uh, they had their stun guns and something was like if you don't put this shit down they're gonna stun you and you're gonna scrape your body up because you're naked and so I said, okay, so I put the stun gun down and they still tried to get me on the fucking ground. Keep in mind, I'm naked. They wanted me on the fucking ground and they basically got, and people were recording this. So somebody has it because there's a lot of people in that fucking day. When they see me naked, they, they was like, cause I was naked for like maybe 10 minutes and the police forced me to the ground and they were mad because they really couldn't force me. Cause when I'm on, when I'm on one week or not. They couldn't control me. And then when they finally wanted to put the cuffs on me, they tried to t- flip me over on this metal grate that was on the ground because it was hot outside. So I could burn my coochie up. And um, then they put me in jail. And they were supposed to release me, and they didn't because I wouldn't get my fingerprints because I didn't do nothing. You feel me? Like, I already know that. And my dad is in law enforcement. And... Um, they're like, we're going to keep you in here until you get your fingerprints up. So I sat in that cell for like five days. And I damn sure don't eat what they eat. The water from the uh, toilet is the water you have to drink. They didn't give me no fucking pillow, no blanket, no nothing. But I have my black jacket. It's a black down jacket. And they gave me some pants to put on. And I had a, a shirt on. One of the MS-13 guys gave me a shirt. And I had that shirt, it was like a blue, navy blue, um, thermal shirt. And that's all I had on. And I was freezing. And I didn't have no fucking blanket, and I had to go through that. And I was going the fuck off in that goddamn cell. And um, finally one day they were like, okay, we're going to release you. I gave my freaking prints finally, and then they was like, we're gonna release you, but they didn't have my fucking suitcases with me. Keep in mind, I'm homeless. There's all my stuff in there, and my documents and shit like that. 
And um, when I went outside, it was like 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, what the fuck is this? How, why are you releasing me so late at night? And I sat out in front of the police station because it's the COVID-19, right? So they put me outside and locked the door, but it was a glass door so I could see inside. They were laughing and shit. And there was some bitch out there with a dude. She was like outside the car. He was inside the car and I asked him what time it is. And the bitch was like, I don't have time to hear your problems or some shit she said to me. And I was like, bitch, fuck you. You feel me? And then I went and started banging on the fucking door. And the bitches and the niggas saw me and they drove off. It was like, whatever. I don't know why the fuck they were out there. I think they was out there to fuck with me. But um, they drove off. Whatever they was doing, they changed your mind. It was sitting right in front of the police station. And I picked a brick up out of the planter, the potter, because um, there was some steps and it was like some plants going down the steps. It was like a brick. And I picked that motherfucker up and I threw it against the wall and it broke. And I picked one part of it up and I hit that fucking window and it shattered. And it hit the door because it's a glass door. The top part shattered. And they came out and they put me back into the cell. And, I, you know, I was naked because I got naked before I did all that. I took off all my clothes, <laughs> got naked again. They fucking broke their window. They came out and got me. I told them I want my shit. Why'd you release me not, without my things? So they put me into, um, back into the cell I was in. And then they kept me there for like another three days, made me do my fingerprints again. Then they made me do my DNA, talking about I was charged with a felony, which right now they dropped all those charges. And plus they were never a felony anyways, because I didn't fucking destroy nothing. And um, they released me. This time it's like two in the afternoon. And they were like, yeah, your stuff is sitting outside. Your, your luggage is outside. I was like, okay, if it ain't, I'm about to fucking go off again. Because you guys don't have a right to keep my shit. So... Some was like, these motherfuckers don't got your shit. So they was walking me out. We were going up some stairs. It was like eight police officers. And I sat down on the steps. And I started talking to them. I was like, you know, you motherfuckers did this before. And I don't feel like you have my shit out there. Go go out there, take a picture of it, bring it back in here. And then I'll go outside. And they were like, no. Finally, they just picked me up and put me outside the police station. They picked me up and carried me all the way outside the police station. Put me outside and closed the door. And it was two in the afternoon and they were laughing and my bags were not out there. And so I'm like, oh shit, here we go again. So I sat there, thought about it, said, I'm tired of this shit. I got naked again and I went and looking and guess what? They had another fucking brick thing out there. This time I took that brick and I broke the window and it shattered both of the windows. So the police that were outside in their police cars, they stopped and they came and they were like, you put the brick down, put the brick down. I'm like, what the fuck, motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm standing in front of the police station. He had a shotgun on me. Keep in mind, I'm standing in a doorway, so there's police behind me. So one of the other police went out the other door, the one I already broke. They had put some wood on it and he went and told the other police officer to put his gun down. And then they made me get on the ground and I had got cut somehow. I remember the lady saying, oh, she's bleeding. And I was thinking, bitch, I told you I was gonna do this if you didn't have my shit out here, what the fuck? So this time they put me in a cell up on the top of the precinct instead of in the bottom. And they left me handcuffed to the floor and they didn't give me my clothes and I was in there butt naked. And I was just like, this is just disgusting. I'm tired of this shit. And I was crying and asking God to help me. I ended up just basically crying myself to sleep. I ended up putting my hands in front of me so I wouldn't be so uncomfortable. But yeah, I had raw pussy sitting on the cement in the fucking jail. And then eventually they came and brought me my clothes, maybe like three, four, five hours later. I don't know. And, um, and I, uh, and then they took me, they said they were going to release me into some COVID-19 hotel. And they took me down to the Linwood Jail, the officer Podesta.
Well, actually, they took me, they came and got me like in the middle of the night and they took me to two hospitals trying to get me admitted. And they wouldn't admit me because there ain't nothing wrong with me. Shit, I just don't like being fucked with. And uh, I mean, it's a little something wrong with me, but nothing for me to be in no mental hospital. And um, then they put me back in the cell and I'm thinking, oh, in the morning they're gonna release me because that's what they said. Instead, they took me to the Linwood County Jail and walked me in there and them people were like, get her out of here. And they sat me in the car and Podesta sat in the car with me for like 40, well, he was outside the car talking to the police for like 45 minutes. And then they finally put me in there and that's when Kobe Bryant started talking through me. And they hurried up and rushed me to a cell. And they said, you'll be, you're going to get mentally evaluated and then we'll release you. And then I stayed in there for four days or something like that. And all kind of weird shit happened in there too. And then um, <clears throat> they said they were going to bring me my bags so I could go. And instead, they came in there with a SWAT team and pepper sprayed me out of that cell. It was being all rough with me, trying to hurt me. You know, like I said, it was like eight police officers, eight men, you feel me, lifted me up, doing all this extra pressure on my body and wrists and arms and legs and shit, trying to hurt me. Put me in the st uh, stretcher. Had just got pepper sprayed. They got their full riot gear on, so they ain't affected by that shit. And they, strolled, or they rolled me up out of there. And they were supposed to be taking me to a fucking hotel. Instead, they took me to UCLA, Harbor, UCLA, and had me sit in there for a couple days. And when I got out the ambulance, I knew something was wrong because they had me at that hospital. And so I tried to walk off, you feel me? Like, get my shit and get the fuck up out of there because they said they were going to release me. That's what they were saying. They even have it on videotape because they videotaped me when I was leaving that jail. And, um... They took me to a fucking hospital. And then the fucking orderlies or whatever at the hospital came and roughed me up. And then when I got in the room and they were like, well, you need to calm down, ma'am. And I'm already, they handcuffed me or whatever, cuffed me to the bed again. And I'm like sitting up and I'm talking to the, the doctor because they had some lady doctor come in there and talk to me. And um, she's like, we're going to give you a shot to calm you down. I was like, I don't like this shit because I don't like fucking drugs. I don't like being knocked out. You feel me? And, um, fucking orderly, this big ass fucking Filipino dude, like huge, motherfucker was like six, two, six, three, couple hundred pounds, fucking took a blanket and fucking shoved that shit in my face and shoved me down to the fucking bed, smothering me. And they, they shot me up and I fell asleep. And finally, like a day or two later, they took me to another mental hospital and I stayed there for like 18 days or something. And I fought to get up out of there because I fought to get out of the other one too. I went to court and they said they was never going to take me back to no crazy hospital and they did it anyway. So that's how I know it's just, they just do what the fuck they want to do. And um, when I got out of the crazy hospital, I had to go get my bags and kind of find out the fucking police when I finally got them because that was a journey too. It's getting long. I don't want to talk about it. But they, um, they took my, my herbs, my weight loss herbs. I had about 50 bags of herbs left, which they're $20 a piece. It ain't a lot, but it's still, I could have used it myself. And they took them. They took a bunch of other stuff out of my bag. And then I ended up coming to where I'm at because in order for me to be released out of that crazy hospital, I had to go to an address. And I was already on a program where they were paying rent for me. And, um... I had to go to where that program is, and that's where I'm at now. And things have been better, you know, because I got a chance to rest instead of pulling those suitcases around. And I'm in Nipsey's area, which is crazy. Like I said, the fact that I end up in Nipsey's area to live is crazy. And it is all by happenstance. Well, it wasn't happenstance, but you know what I mean. It wasn't planned like that. Yeah, I ended up staying like fucking five blocks from where the fucking police took me from the gas station. So, five long blocks. But either way, that's my stories with going to the hospital and all this shit. And like I said, I'm tired. And I don't care anymore what's happening with the music and stuff. Because like I said, 
I'm going through a lot of bullshit out here. And motherfuckers are enjoying it, and I'm not. And I don't have to be here. I don't have to be in this body. I still be the same soul I've always been. But this body here on this earth is, is trouble for me because they're trying to abuse me every chance they get. That's why I try my hardest to stay from being agitated or um, annoyed or anything because I don't know what motherfucker might happen because I'm at the end of my rope with this shit and this fucking physical abuse I've been dealing with. Any fucking police and all this shit, this theft and everything else, I'm just tired of it. That's why I appreciate the music and I appreciate the videos, but it's just bad memories. And I really don't know what to do to get out of this situation and I really don't care. I don't have the energy for it. Like I said, I've been fighting for years, 10 years, just to try to survive in the middle of these motherfuckers going against me. And I don't want to do it. I don't care. I don't want to pray for God to save me. I want to pray for God to take me out of here so I don't have to deal with this shit no more. That's what I want. I don't want to stay here. And it makes me mad to know that there's people watching this and they really don't give a fuck like that. Because it's a movie, it's funny. Or whatever. I don't know, but... I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna spin up my last dollar in here and go get me something to eat with my last dollar. Because like I said, this is how it begins. Me being broke and just having to do wild shit to get money or feel bad or be depressed or whatever. So if that's what you motherfuckers want, so be it. Maybe something will happen and I'll fucking die.